Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the BSME Awards 2020. I'm Maria Pieri, 2020 Chair of the BSME and Editorial Director of National Geographic Traveller, and I'm thrilled to be your host this evening. For the Talent Awards in the summer, I hosted you from my kitchen. We promised we'd give you something much grander for the next awards. So here we are in my living room. These awards have been, always been the biggest BSME event of the year, and tonight is no exception. Whilst we may not be together drinking champagne in a Mayfair hotel, 2020 saw some of the most creative, innovative and incredible work the magazine world has ever seen. And that deserves to be recognised. Tonight is about every single one of you, all of the editors across digital and print, the art directors and columnists who worked so hard and made 2020 ever so slightly more bearable. In spite of facing the toughest year our industry has seen in a long time, every single one of you shortlisted faced the challenge head on, creating work that inspired your readers and despite social distancing, brought us all closer together than ever before. And all from your kitchen tables, bedrooms and home offices. So kick off your slippers, fill up your glasses and get ready to toast to a year to remember for magazines. Thanks to the brilliant people at Evesio, we have software that means you're all hopefully sitting on virtual tables with your colleagues and friends meaning you can still celebrate together without the hassle of getting a cab home at the end of the evening. And don't forget to follow us on social media if you haven't already. We will be posting live, an live announcements of our winners throughout the evening and we would love for you to get involved at home by sharing your own snaps too. Hashtag BSME Awards 2020 if you needed that reminder. So before we kick off, I'm more than a little excited to be welcoming this year's guest presenter, Radio One, Pre Radio One presenter and 2020 Strictly Come Dancing star, it's the one and only Clara Ampho. Hello Maria, hello everybody at home. Oh yeah, she's Hi. already started. Glasses at the ready, obviously very serious about doing some work, which is tonight awarding all of you guys. I'm so excited to be with all of you this evening. Now look, as you know, uh, the BSME Awards are always such a fantastic occasion and this year it definitely feels like we need them more than ever. I have been told by little birdie, Maria, um, that the standard of entries this year was incredible, which is why I'm so honoured to be hosting an event that celebrates the individuals shaping the industry right now and of course that showcases the content that's helped guide, entertain and inspire audiences at a time where many people feel alone, isolated and definitely are in need of a good cheering up. So please join me, I told you I was ready, in filling up for your glasses of fizz, cups of tea, whatever's gonna make you feel good, but do make sure you make plenty of noise for our incredible winners as they are announced, both on social media and from your sofa. So cheers everyone. Maria, take it away. Cheers, Clara, thank you. I'm ready too, we'll both be ready. Okay, so should we get started? Let's do it. So for our first category, let's get straight onto business with a shortlist for Editor of the Year, Business and Finance. The nominees are Chloe McCulloch, Building, Gideon Spanier, Campaign, Jack Cortez, RN, Jenny Ross, Witch, Money. And the winner is... Gideon Spanier. Congratulations, Gideon Spanier from Campaign Magazine. The judges said Gideon Spanier was unanimously voted the winner and for good reason. Assuming the editorship days before lockdown, he rapidly deployed change at scale to campaigns content, regular franchises, tone and voice with masterful impact. Proof that professional trade titles can be brilliant must read magazines. First winner of the evening, congratulations Gideon. We're off to a good start, are we not Maria? Absolutely, well done Gideon. Next up, we have the award for the Editor of the Year, Branded Content. The nominees are Julia Martin, Boots, Health and Beauty. Ellie Hughes, Holland and Barrett, Healthy. Kate Cornish, Pets at Home, My VIP. John L. Waters, Pulp. Debbie Codds, Waitrose Partners and Drinks. And the winner is... Julia Martin, Boots, Health and Beauty magazine. Well done, Julia. This is what the judges had to say. Boots Health & Beauty is a magazine commended for its work in highlighting diversity and being unafraid to have uncomfortable conversations. Well done again, Julia. Next, we have the Editor of the Year Culture category. I think I can safely say that if 2020 taught us anything, it's how much we all need to connect with culture and the arts. It's been a busy year for you lot. Keep up the fantastic work. Join me in welcoming award-winning journalist and mental health advocate who writes for publications such as Refinery29, Vice and Time Out London. 
Jessica Morgan. Bye, Bye Jessica. Maria. Bye. Thank you so much for having me here to the BSME. I'm so pleased to be here to celebrate the incredible talent in our industry. And just to echo you there, the last year has shown how incredible our industry has been to adapt and show resilience during these uncertain times. So I'm pleased to announce the shortlist. Rebecca Lawrence, BBC Culture. Dan Crow, Port Magazine. Benjamin Sesher, Review. Mike Williams, Sight and Sound. And Joseph McAtish, Time Out London. And the winner is... Dan Crow, Port Magazine. Congratulations, Dan. The judges said, put simply, this editor has crafted a brilliant magazine that earns a permanent position on the coffee table. Top quality journalism, arresting design, and a diverse and engaging snapshot of culture today. Thank you, Jessica. I love Port Magazine. I only just discovered it, so it's a great magazine. It is, isn't it? It's been one of my favorites for a while. So fantastic, so congratulations. And what an incredible group of editors who have brought fresh ideas to the table to best serve their audience, to uplift and keep everyone inspired during these times. So thank you so much. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Jessica. Bye. Bye. We move on to our next award, which is for Editor of the Year, Current Affairs and Politics. And we are honoured to welcome journalist, author and world affairs editor for the BBC, John Simpson. Hello, John. Hello, Clara, and how nice you look. I, I thought I'd better make a bit of an effort myself, so I put on a, a shirt and tie for the first time, I should think, in, in months. <laughs> Anyway, the effort has been received. The effort is appreciated. The tie is excellent. You're, you're good to go. <laughs> well, this has been, of course, a really testing time for magazines, but some of them have risen to the challenge really impressively, including all the current affairs magazines we've shortlisted. I imagine a lot of people do exactly what I do, that they devour every magazine, especially news magazines, that they can get hold of, because at a time when you can't really get out much, it makes you feel you're still kind of connected to the real world. Anyway, the shortlisted nominees for Editor of the Year, Current Affairs and Politics are Jason Cowley, New Statesman, Tom Clark, Prospect Magazine, Paul McNamee, The Big Issue, and Fraser Nelson, The Spectator. And the winner is Jason Cowley of this new state. Many, many congratulations for winning this highly prestigious award. The judges said in increasingly tribal times, Jason Cowley continues to champion independence of thought and diversity of opinion, challenging his audience and producing a magazine that's imaginative, unpredictable and always interesting. And as someone who's written reasonably regularly for The New Statesman, I have to agree. As a reader, it's the unpredictability that I cherish. You never know what you're going to get. And the opinions aren't just from one little corner of the spectrum. So best wishes to you, Jason, and to all the other finalists for a successful year to come. And many congratulations. And goodbye, Clara. Best to you too. Thank you. Congratulations again, Jason, and thank you, John. Next up, we've got the shortlist for Digital Editor of the Year. Joining us, we have the founder of artprojectlockdownlovestories.com, where people can anonymously submit their real-life experiences of love in lockdown. Yikes. The project has been featured in Stylist, Grazia and Metro, amongst many others, and we are happy to welcome Philippa Found to announce the shortlist and winner for Editor of the Year Digital. Hi, Philippa. Hi, thank you, Maria, and hello, everybody. Um, these last 12 months, we've all had to adapt and digitalize our lives and professions in ways we never would have foreseen. Myself as an artist, I never would have predicted that I'd be creating an art project that was entirely online. And this year, I've enjoyed seeing growth and successes of the digital editors in our industry. We have six fantastic contenders, and they are, Marcus Fair's Dezine, 
Bianca London, Glamour UK, Anna Conrad, GQ.co.uk, Josephine Price, National Geographic Traveller UK, Felicity Thistlethwaite, Stylist.co.uk, BJ Patney, Topgear.com. And the winner for Digital Editor of the Year is Anna Conrad, GQ.co.uk. Congratulations! This is what our judging panel had to say, Anna. 2020 was a pivotal year for media as traditional brands struggled to stay relevant in rapidly changing times. DQ Digital covered the big cultural and news moments with a breadth and depth of coverage that outshone its competitors and a lightness of tone that was spot on for its audience. Congratulations again, Anna. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks so much for having me. And now we're going head to head in the Entertainment and Celebrity Editor of the Year category. Our two wonderful shortlisted nominees are Thomas Whitaker, hello, and Shem Law and Tom Loxley, Radio Times. Both superb publication, but who's going to take home the win this evening? I'm proud to announce that the winner of the Entertainment and Celebrity Editor of the Year is Shem Law and Tom Loxley, Radio Times. Congratulations to both of you. The judges said, this magazine kept people in the loop and entertained during lockdown, but also used its pages to educate and reassure. In an era when you can find listings online, it has found a way to be useful and have a job to do. And it's doing that job very well. Next up, we've got a very popular category for all of you foodies out there, which I suspect is everyone. And with saying that, with no judgment, hands up, if you spent the majority of 2020 baking banana bread and sourdough and then boring everybody in your WhatsApp group with it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, very excited to welcome the golden girl of Persian cookery and best-selling award-winning author of cookbooks, Persiana, Shiroko, Feast, Bazaar, and simply Sabrina Gayor to announce the shortlist and winner. Hello, Sabrina. Hi Clara and hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely honoured to have been asked to present this particular award. Like many of you, I have spent much of the last year escaping into the pages of food and drink magazines, finding inspiration in recipes, what to cook, and more importantly, I have drawn so much inspiration as a cookery writer and author from food magazines over the years. I'm a consummate geek, so to be able to present this award means so much to someone like me. The shortlisted entrants for Editor of the Year in Food and Drink are Claire Lavelle, Asda Magazine, Nick Rampley Clark, Co-op Food, Karen Barnes, Delicious Magazine, Laura Jackson, Love Food, Glenn Mutel, National Geographic Travel of Food, Helen Graves, Pitt Magazine, Nina Pullman, Wicked Leaks. This was such a tough category to judge that the judges would like to highly commend one of the entries. Congratulations to Glenn Mutel, National Geographic Travel of Food. The judges said this was a real treat, brilliant visuals, infographics and curated places that offered its readers the chance to enjoy all the flavours of travel through bars and restaurants and capture the taste of a place. And the winner is Helen Graves of Pit Magazine. A huge congratulations, Helen. This is what the judges had to say. Even the most staunch vegetarian on our judging panel was engrossed in its beautiful redesign, brilliant visuals and attention to detail. I'm thrilled for you, Helen. I remember when we first met and I'm so, so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you everyone for having me. It has been my pleasure to play some small part in these proceedings and congratulations to all the winners this evening. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. And thank you, Sabrina. Feeling quite hungry now. If there's one category that boomed last year, it's gardening, as a whole host of novices join those garden enthusiasts in realising the power of green-fingered energy. So I'm so pleased to welcome a gardening legend with us to announce the shortlist for Editor of the Year, Garden and Country, Alan Titchmarsh. Hi Alan, how are you doing? Hi Maria, lovely to be with you. Oh, it's so lovely to have you. So, if I could ask for one tip perhaps for all those garden enthusiasts? Well, please keep gardening. It's proved to us this year how valuable it is and just keeping us sane and 
keeping us connected with the earth. And for all those people who came to it the first time, keep doing it. And remember that if you do the little bit immediately outside your window, and then you come in, you'll see what you've done. Don't start down the bottom of the garden and work your way back. So every time you come in, you'll be depressed because you can't see it. So start outside the window and work your way down the garden and keep enjoying it. It's what it's there for. The shortlist for Editor of the Year Garden and Country is Lucy Hall, BBC Gardeners World, Liz Potter, Garden Answers, Lucy Bellamy, Gardens Illustrated, Rachel Hawkins, Landscape, and the winner is Lucy Hall, BBC Gardens World. Well done, Lucy. Fantastic outcome, well deserved. The judges said that Gardens World magazine is the go-to magazine for those who love to grow and it's easy to see why as it's packed with really authoritative advice beautiful imagery and is brilliantly designed and based which is a great relief to me because i contribute to it every month and i've been doing since it started 30 years ago it's a lovely anniversary present for lucy this well done that's fantastic news well done and we'll be sure to read your column too thank you thank you alan pleasure The next category is Editor of the Year, Home and Interiors. Now, this does get me very excited because, <laughs> look, I'm home and here are some of my interiors, which I thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> um, and let's get into our shortlist. Caroline Rowland, 91 Magazine. Natalie Davies, loveproperty.com. Loma and Marks, Reclaim. And the winner is... Loma and Marks Reclaim. Well done, Loma. The judges said Reclaim is a brilliant and surprising magazine. The passion for the topic jumps off the pages and shines through. Next up, we've got a fiercely contested category with seven shortlisted entrants. You have to feel for the judges on this one, don't you? Good luck to you all. And to announce the shortlist and winner for Editor of the Year, Independent, please welcome founder of the beautiful design studio and magazine shop Mag Culture and the winner of the BSME Mark Boxer Award in 2018, Jeremy Leslie. Hi Jeremy! Hey Maria, good to see you. Uh, it's lovely to be here tonight. I'm joining you from the Mag Culture shop which has been described as the spiritual home of independent publishing. Uh, as you said, uh, it's a fierce with contested section. We've got a short list of seven for editors who are independent uh, and that list goes as follows. Marcus Bears from the Zine, John L. Walters from I Magazine, Vivian Jones of the Pookie, Alex Mead from Rugby Journal, Louise Robinson from Sarka Magazine, Sarah Ward from Spinning World Magazine, and Michelle Johnson. What a fantastic shortlist, but of course they've known to be one winner. And the winner of the Independent Category 2020 is Marcus Bears from the Zine. So well done, Marcus. The judges said, this magazine made a positive of the lockdown with a new initiative to chime with readers and produce tangible results. So a huge congratulations to you for the win. So that's fantastic. Really looking forward to being able to browse once more into your shop. I can't wait. Thanks so much. Bye. I look forward to seeing you soon. Next up, we've got a big one. It is time for Editor of the Year, Men and Women's Bi-Weekly, Monthly, Less Frequent. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue, does it? But still a very, very prestigious title. We have got some powerhouses in here and the shortlist is Farah Store, Elle, Gabby Haddad, Good Housekeeping, Dylan Jones, GQ, Richard Denham, Tatler, Kate Reardon, Times Lux, Edward Eninful, Vogue. Well, this is certainly one for the history books. This category was so competitive that the judges decided to name not one, but two winners. So here is our first, which is Kate Reardon times Lux. Congratulations, Kate. Let's see what our judging panel had to say. An editor who has come in and transformed her field, the newspaper luxury supplement. She delivers all the glitz and glamour that's required and adds intelligence and soul to make a magazine that even the hard up reader can enjoy. Massive congratulations to you, Kate, and on to our other winner, Maria. Thank you, Clara. And our joint winner is... Farah Storr from Elle. Congratulations, Farah. 
The judges said, in the past year, this editor has shaken up the fashion glossy market with brave choices and a bold new direction for their title. The judges were impressed by the significant modernization of this long-standing brand and a commitment to diversity and following a new agenda, heavily influenced by the new world we find ourselves in, that brought the magazine bang up to date. Congratulations, Farah. Okay, so we're now moving on to the weeklies. There are three great contenders here. The shortlist for Editor of the Year, Men's and Women's Weekly, more frequent, is... Javon Wykes, Best. Hattie Brett, Grazia. Claire Cohen, Telegraph Women. And the winner is... I don't know what that noise was. It was a winning noise. Um, it is... Hattie Brett for Grazia. A huge congratulations, Hattie. Here is what the judges had to say. Your ability to pivot during COVID was just breathtaking. Grazia recalibrated the idea of hero and celebrity by showcasing real people on its cover and yet still managed to remain smart, sassy and on trend in a way that stayed true to its target audience. Congratulations Hattie, so very well deserved and all particular salute to you for the um, NHS covers that you did in March. Maria, I'm sure you'll agree that was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely innovative and really great to see her doing those. Absolutely great. Deserved winner. Cheers to Hattie. Cheers, Hattie. This one's for the racing fans and petrol heads out there. I'm also one by association and I do really love reading these entries. Our next category is Editor of the Year Motoring. Our shortlist is Ben Miller, Car. Gareth Evans, Motorcycle News. Danny Hopkins, Practical Classics. And I'm thrilled to announce the winner is Ben Miller, Car. Amazing, well done, Ben. Our judges said, Car is a true tour de force, featuring supercharged design and gallons of beautiful photography. It delivers again and again. Stylish content meshes with well-handled writing, giving the magazine a lightness of touch and appeal that reaches beyond the motoring enthusiast. It's a full throttle triumph. The next award is for Newspaper Magazine Editor of the Year, and to announce the shortlist and winner, we welcome broadcaster and journalist Kate Garraway. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be announcing the shortlist for BSME Editor of the Year Newspaper Magazine. The shortlist is Sinead McIntyre, Fabulous Magazine, Alice Fishburn, Financial Times, Joe Ellison, How to Spend It, Caroline Barrett, Stella Magazine, Chrissy Murison, The Sunday Times Magazine, Marianne Jones, The Telegraph Magazine, and Nicola Gill, The Times Magazine. Thank you, Kate. And the winner is Marianne Jones, The Telegraph Magazine. Congratulations, Marianne. The Jossie said, this was a tough category with many outstanding entries, but the winner showed a smart and spirited response to COVID, creating memorable issues packed with exclusives. All right, next up we have got the award for Editor of the Year, Science, Technology and Environment. And here to tell us all about the shortlist and winning entry is Dan Green, BSME committee member, Editor of the Week Junior, Science and Nature, and officially 100% the best quiff in the industry. Hello, Dan. Hello, Clara, thank you. You're too kind, you're too kind. I do aim to please. Get on with it, Daddy. Sure thing, Otis. Here we have our four contenders for Editor of the Year, Science, Technology and Environment. And they are Amanda Ruggeri, BBC Future, Chris Bramley, BBC Sky and Night Magazine, Kate Bevan, Witch Computing, Greg Williams, Wired, Okay, and the judges would like to commend an entry in that category, and it is Amanda Ruggeri, BBC Future. This is what the judges had to say. Amanda's commitment to diversity in a sector not known for it is admirable. She has shown great innovative spirit to champion quality and balance in the contributors and improve the value offered to readers. She even launched a new site, BBC Future Planet. Well done, Amanda. And the winner is Greg Williams Wired. Congratulations, Greg. Our judges said some magazines deliver excellence year after year. 
this one is confident and authoritative, full of imaginative ideas, bold graphics, and classy long form writing. So all the brilliant people in this brilliant category, in 2020, as in no other year before, they've led the way and helped us find a path through our new and difficult, sometimes worrying situation. So thanks for letting me announce the winners and have a fantastic evening. Great job. Okay, bye. 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 It's now time for Editor of the Year Specialist, and the shortlist is Gillian Lochran, Autism Eye, Louise Zechevic, Balance Magazine, Marcus Fairs, Dizine, Richard Clare, Mega, Sarah Ward, Slimming World Magazine, Harry Rose, Witch. Goes to show what an incredibly strong year it was this year. The judges would like to commend another strong contender in this category. Harry Rose, Witch. The feedback was that Harry impressed the judges with his ability to take in-depth reader research and turn Witch into an even better product. His title makes the mundane unmissable and his latest redesign is a triumph of relevance, accessibility and hard-hitting authority. Congratulations, Harry. But we can have only one winner and this year it will be... Marcus Fair, Dazeem. Congratulations, Marcus. Our judging panel said, always at the top of their game, this brand continues to evolve, innovate and find new ways to engage its audience in an entertaining, informative and more importantly, effective way. Great stuff, Marcus. Thoroughly deserved. Our next category is Editor of the Year, Sport, Fitness and Health. Despite a challenging year, these fantastic titles have thrived and left a lasting impression on our judges. And here to announce the shortlist and winner is someone who certainly loves a good walk and has become quite the expert on them too. We're happy, we're really happy to welcome television presenter, Julia Bradbury. Hello, Maria. This certainly is a time in life when we've all been forced to take care of our health in quite challenging conditions, isn't it? And walking and yoga have definitely been my lifesaver. So the shortlisted nominees are Alex Mead for Rugby Journal, Andy Dixon for Runner's World, Sarah Ward for Slimming World magazine, Simon Hughes, The Cricketer, Claire Sanderson, Woman's Health, and Esther Newman, for women's running. The judges would like to commend Alex Mead from Rugby Journal in this category. They said that Alex Mead's long form coffee table magazine is an indulgent, substantial and fascinating read, whether you enjoy rugby or not. This glorious independent title champions engaging profiles and stunning photography, while Alex's passion for both rugby and magazines shines through. So big congratulations there. The winner of this category is Claire Sanderson from Woman's Health. Congratulations to Claire. And here's what the judges had to say. Why have a personal trainer when you can have this magazine? Quite frankly, it blew our judges away. Oh, brilliant work. Well done to both Alex and Claire. A much needed category this year as well. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for joining us this evening. It's my pleasure. We had so many wonderful entrants for our next category, Editor of the Year, Trade and Professional. So please put your hands together for the shortlist, which is... Beth Kennedy, C&D. Dickin Ross, e &T, Steve Ford, Nursing Times. Liz Hampson, Property Week. Jamie Kafash, Pulse. Sarah Richardson, Research Professional News. Adam Leyland, The Grocer. Sophie Griffiths, TTG. Wow, good luck to all because that's a fiercely competitive list. But there can only be one winner, and today that winner is Jamie Kafash, Pulse. Congratulations, Jamie. That's two in a row for you, I believe. Let's take a look at what the judges had to say. In a hellish year for the profession he serves and a testing time for trade mags, the winning editor gave his readers great support, shrugged off a 37% budget cut, and set the news agenda by breaking vital stories. It's probably fair to say travel editors face more than a few hurdles in 2020s with holidays on, off, then on, then off again. But nonetheless, they did a fantastic job of inspiring and transporting their readers to brighter places, which I think we all definitely needed. We have a lovely guest joining us now to present this shortlist, TV presenter, travel writer, and motorbike enthusiast, Charlie Borman. Hello, Charlie. Hey, hello, Claire. Clara. Clara. 
<laughs> Straight away. Sorry. Look, you listen, Charlie. With the amount of traveling that you've done and the experience that you have, you can call me whatever you like. Carry on. Clara, my goddaughter's called Clara. Well, there say. you go. It's, it's like a name that now you're never ever going to forget. So let's talk exactly. about this shortlist for Travel Editor of the Year. <laughs> Well, it's absolutely lovely to be here and I feel kind of privileged to be able to present this next award as travel is a, is a huge part of my life. And, and, and um, uh, so, um, so without further ado, um, we'll go straight into the, uh, to the shortlist for Travel Editor of the Year. So <clears throat> it's Johnny Ensel, EasyJet Traveller, Laura Jackson, LoveExploring.com, Pat Riddell, National Geographic Traveller, UK. Lynn Hughes, Wanderlust. Roy Boland, Witch Travel. And the winner of Travel Editor of the Year is... Roy Boland, Witch Travel. The judges said this magazine managed to change its whole business model and launch a new website at a time when its future could have been at stake. So well done. And this, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I said, uh, hopefully I can see all of you down the road somewhere in some exotic, wonderful place when all this Corona stuff is over. So anyway, take care, have a lovely rest of the evening and thanks for letting me come on board. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. We're on to our final Editor of the Year award and this award is for our Editor of the Year Youth. And here to announce the shortlist and winner is Ellie Goldstein, a British model who caught the world's attention after starring in a Gucci beauty campaign and who went on to be a cover star for Allure in the US and Glamour in the UK. Hi Ellie, how are you? So lovely to have you here. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, do you want to tell us about how, how you felt, how important it was for you to, to do the cover, to be the cover person for the magazines last year? I feel representation and diversity are so important to me. I have changed the fashion and beauty industry by being me. Other table models need to be seen. I was honoured to be the cover girl for Glamour and Elor. Follow your dreams and never give up. And indeed, and you gave us such insight there, and you were a terrific cover girl. Thank you for that. Um, so now, what's next? You're going to tell us who's on the shortlist? Well, the shortlist is Peter Hart, BBC Top of the Pops, Jamie Clifton, and Vice UK, Vivian Jones Cookie. The winner of the editor of the year is Jamie Clifton, Vice UK. Amazing! Well done, Jamie. I've just said a brand that never patronises its audience. This winter's initiative, editorial resolution, resulted in a gentle hasn't excuses. Thank you. That was fantastic. And can't wait to see how your career will progress next. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Well, hello everyone, I hope the evening's going well so far. Uh, maybe you yourself have won an award. If so, congratulations. Or perhaps somebody exciting has slipped into your DMs. I don't think I have done that yet so far. And if I have, sorry in advance. Either way, let me know how you're celebrating on social media. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Clara, brilliant. Hi again, everyone. Hope you're all topped up and having a lovely evening so far. I'd love to just take a moment and thank you all again for your incredible work, energy, tenaciousness and all-round brilliance this year and also for your continuing support of the BSME. We've loved working with you all. I've thoroughly enjoyed my year as Chair of the BSME in 2020 but my tenure is now coming to an end and it's almost time to hand over to someone who I know is going to do brilliant things in 2021. I'm thrilled to introduce the rather awesome editor of Grazia and the next Chair of the BSME. Hattie Brett, hello! Hi Maria, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here with you and Clara doing such a brilliant job tonight at what feels to me like the most significant BSME Awards yet because they're a reminder that we made it through 2020. Hooray! And also that we did some brilliant, brilliant work along the way. So well done everyone who's nominated tonight. Drink to that. But now on with the awards. I'm thrilled to be presenting our art director categories. And first up, 
Art Director of the Year Consumer. We had so many brilliant entries for this that the judging panel had to work doubly hard. The shortlist is Gary Cochran from 1843 Magazine, Andy Franklin, BBC Top Gear, Tom Meredith, L, Chris Lupton, Empire, Rasha Carhill, How to Spend It, Matt Willey, Port Magazine, Simon Campbell, Rugby Journal, Dan Biddulph, The Sunday Times Magazine, Andrew Diprose, Wired. First up, the judges would like to commend a fantastic entry, and that goes to Chris Lupton at Empire. Our judges were blown away, as they put it, with the consistent creativity seen on the pages of Empire in 2020. Visuals were always dynamic, innovative and surprising, with an endless array of creative devices, beautiful imagery and endlessly smart headers and fonts. Congratulations, Chris. However, I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Art Director of the Year consumer is Andrew Diprose from Wired. Congratulations, Andrew. The judges said, a great magazine should surprise and delight, and this brand's design delivers both in buckets through its unique lens. With a bold use of photography, space, pace, infographics, illustrations, and fun and colorful design. Very, very well done and well deserved, Andrew. And now I think it's back to Maria in her amazing living room. Congratulations on another virtual BSME awards and hopefully one in real life soon. Thank you so much, Hattie. That's fantastic. I um, look forward to celebrating with you in person and also being able to hopefully share a drink with you too very soon. In the meantime, congratulations on your award win. I'm sure there's more to come. I think you'll be an excellent BSME chair for 2021 and can't wait to see what great things you'll do. Now I'll announce the shortlist and winner of Art Director of the Year B2B. The shortlist is... Alison Fisher, Drapers. John Rooney, ENT. Nigel Peters, EG. Simon Esterson, I. Sunny Damu, Inside Housing. The winner of Art Director of the Year B2B is... Simon Esterson, I. A huge well done to you, Simon. Let's hear what the judges had to say. Simon remains one of the preeminent designers in our industry and I is as stunning, innovative and beautifully designed as ever. It's the standout magazine in its category and its consistent brilliance should be celebrated. On to our third and final Art Director of the Year Award and this time it's for branded content and the shortlist is... Geraldine Lynch, Boots Health and Beauty Simon Esterson, Pulp Martin Tullett, Royal Botanic Gardens, Q. Naomi Lowe, Waitrose and Partners Drinks. Kerry Wakefield, Waitrose and Partners Food. Tan Palmer, Waitrose and Partners Health. The judges would like to highly commend one of our shortlisted entries, Geraldine Lynch, Boots Health and Beauty. They said, this art director's bold redesign deserves a highly commended nod for its fresh take on an established market. Hooray! But the winner of Art Director of the Year branded content is Kerry Wakefield, Waitress and Partners Food. Amazing work, Kerry. The judges were very impressed. Consistently excellent, but also showed incredible flexibility and innovation in a very difficult time. This magazine is always one of the best in the sector, and the art direction is always at the heart of it, telling stories in a unique way. Now it's time for our Columnist of the Year categories. This bunch have captivated the nation and their sector with their fascinating anecdotes, informative cat commentary and occasional controversial opinions. We'll start with Columnist of the Year, B2B. And the shortlist is... Gideon Spanier, Campaign. Hilary Lamb, ENT. Ben Hoibel, ENT. Mark Ritson, Marketing Week. The winner of Columnist of the Year, B2B, is... Ben Hoibel, ENT. The judges were so impressed, they said... In 2020, we needed facts more than ever. One investigative journalist made it his mission to turn facts into graphics and add a sharp commentary on subjects ranging from the decline of the petrol station to stop and search. The result was an innovative column and an important one. Well done, Ben. Congratulations, a deserved win. 
Okay, it's on to our next award, which is for Columnist of the Year Consumer. Let's welcome to the screen, Editor-in-Chief of the very glam Marie Claire, Andrea Thompson. Hello, Andrea. Hello and hello everybody. Hello Clara, lovely to see you again. Lovely to lovely see you too. In November, when we did the Marie Claire Future Shapers Awards, we would still be in lockdown, but there we go. Here we go. And thank you for making me a Future Shaper, by the way. And whilst I have your attention, please do not judge me for these lockdown nails. We're trying our best. It was a home shellac situation. It is what it is. But anyway, back to business, the awards. <laughs> Anyway, let's crack on with the award. And the shortlist is Monty Don, BBC Gardener's World, Piers Morgan, Event, Simon Cooper, Financial Times, Holly Vernon, Grazia, Stephen Bush, New Statesman, Billy Bartia, Stylist, Claire Cohen, Telegraph Women, and Kathleen Moran, Times Magazine, Wow, what an amazing lineup of talent that is. Fantastic there. Um, but the winner is Simon Cooper for the Financial Times. Amazing. Welcome, Simon. The judges said that Simon's columns were excellently written, topical, and above all, insightful. They always leave you with a sense you've genuinely learned something new while being thoroughly entertained along the way. Well done, Simon. Well done, Simon. And Andrea, thank you so very much. And yes, hopefully see you in real life at some time soon. Bye. Bye-bye. The next award is for Launch of the Year, celebrating the best new publication to have launched in 2020. And of course, the editorial team behind the brand. I cannot wait to see more of the following in future. Selena Boyd, Coco Publishing. Vicky Chandler, Delish UK, Martha Henriks, Future Planet, Lisa Smazarski, Felicity Thistlethwaite, Mary Emma Heary, and Chloe Gray, stylist.co.uk, Unity Blot, Tyler, Chris Dillon, Vape Retailer. Some exciting new titles in there, and the winner of Launch of the Year is Selena Boyd, Coco Publishing. Congratulations, Selena, very well deserved. The judges said, Selena Boyd has an impeccable eye for spotting a niche in publishing and delivering a laser guided product to fill the void. Coco gives voice to an underserved audience and does so with joy, inspiration and ideas galore. The judges especially admired the sensitive use of shared content between boys and girls editions. Who doesn't love a great cover? We've absolutely loved the following print and digital covers from last year, all voted for entirely by you. And to announce the winners for cover of the year, B2B and consumer, we are thrilled to welcome the legendary American photographer who has photographed so many iconic covers, but probably none more than the Afghan girl, which appeared on the front of National Geographic in 1985. So I think it's safe to say Steve McCurry knows the impact of a great cover. Hello Steve and welcome. Before you read the shortlist, I don't suppose you can give us some insight on what makes that killer shot? Well, thanks for having me, Maria. It's a pleasure to be with you. I think a cover, I think a great cover shot needs to have a, a lot of emotion. Uh, apart from you know composition and light, I think you want to have a, a portrait which is memorable, something that'll stick with you, something that you can't forget. And I think emotion is really the key element to that memorable portrait. So, but yeah, let's get right to it. I'd like to announce, uh, and these are candidates chosen by you. Uh, first, we have the cover of the year, B2B. And the short list is Matt Ford, CA, John Rooney, ENT, Jennifer Van Score, Nursing Times, Liz Hampson, Lee Tip Lady, and Simon Creasy, Property Week. Simon Esterson and Holly Catford, Pulp. Jamie Kerfash, James Dupree, Pulse. Well, that was an impressive list. The winner is Jennifer Van Score for Nursing Times. Congratulations, Jennifer. Now let's move on to cover of the year, Consumer. Again, we have a lot of great entries and the short list is 
Geraldine Lynch, Boots Health and Beauty, Claire Hodgson and Stuart Selner, Cosmopolitan, Erica Weathers, New Statesman, Holly Catford and Robert Billington, Pitt Magazine, Alex Mead and Simon Campbell, Rugby Journal, Jess Hibbert, Saga Magazine, Lisa Smosarski, Alex Walker, Tom Gormer, Stylist, Kerry Wakefield, Wait Rose and Partners Food. I remember seeing a lot of those covers on the newsstand and wow, they were impressive. So the winner is Eric Weathers for New Statesman. Congratulations to all the winners. A lot of wonderful work. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We really admire your work. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us tonight. Now we've got our two new categories for 2020. First up is Editor-in-Chief, Editorial Director of the Year, to celebrate those who are not editors in their day-to-day -day roles or oversee more than one publication. Obviously something I'm going to be looking to enter for next year. But in the meantime, the shortlist is... Christine Hayes, BBC Good Food, Olive. Gabby Huddock, Good Housekeeping, Red and Prima. Rosie Nixon, Hello. Sasha Slater, Luxury, Ultra Travel and ST. Tim Pollard, Parkers.co.uk, Car, Motorcycle News, and Today's Golfer. Lisa Smasarski, Stylist. Caroline McKinn, Time Out Global. Charlie Turner, Top Gear, and TopGear.com. The winner is the lovely Tim Pollard. Congratulations, Tim. The judges said the winner of this award is a true player manager, demonstrating leadership and strategic success while still keeping their hand in writing quality copy whenever they can. During this challenging year, they not only ensured their brand succeeded, but also took great care in the team who makes them. A great boss who leads by example. Our next award of the night is one we think is really important for this year. The BSME Special Recognition Award 2020 reflects the topsy-turvy time we all had last year and the following people and brands went above and beyond for all their readers. Here to announce the shortlisted nominees and our winner is the wonderful underwear runner, writer, Telegraph columnist and podcaster, Bryony Gordon. Hi Bryony, so lovely to have you here. Thank you Maria, it's great to be with you even if I am in my bedroom. And I'm so excited to be reading out the shortlist for the Special Recognition Award that I've even bothered to put some clothes on. So the shortlist for this award is Lucy Hall, BBC Gardener's World. BBC Good Food, Dizine, Immediate Media, Youth and Children's Editors, Your Mind Matters, Nursing Times, Liz Hampson and Property Week Editorial Team, Paul McNamee, The Big Issue, Time Out, Edward Enenful, Vogue, Rory Boland and Witch Travel Team. Apparently the judges discussed this category for a record-breaking amount of time, so fierce was the competition. So the judges would love to give a very special, highly commended to Paul McNamee at The Big Issue. The judges loved this entry and said, overnight The Big Issue had to rethink its entire business model in order to survive and continue its valuable role. This was an impressive pivot of a much respected brand during an incredibly challenging time. But the BSME Special Recognition 2020 Award goes to Immediate Media, Youth and Children's Editors, Your Mind Matters. The judges said this was a very powerful entry that has never felt more relevant. A fantastic campaign to support the mental health of so many children. The Immediate Media Youth pulled together all their resources to ensure maximum reach and impact. Very worthy winners and the perfect template future initiatives and I just like to say personally as the mother of a seven-year-old but also as someone who first experienced mental illness in childhood how amazing this project is and how much I appreciate it and how grateful I am to all of the journalists and editors at Immediate Media who got it together especially during such a terrible time so thank you and well done. Thank you Bryony I think we all agree that that's such a powerful initiative and so relevant for our times. Now to bring our award ceremony to a close, we have two very special awards to announce. 
the Editor's Editor and the Mark Boxer Award, which has been compared to winning a magazine Oscar. A big deal. Except without the little gold man to take home and put in your bathroom. Sorry about that. Prestigious nonetheless. <laughs> So let's start off with the much coveted Editor's Editor Award, which is arguably so special because the nominees are put forward by their peers within the BSME community. It was an amazing long list, which with difficulty became an incredible shortlist, which is... Hattie Brett, Grazia. Edward Enninful, Vogue. Gabby Huddock, Good Housekeeping. Paul McNamee, The Big Issue. John L. Waters, I Magazine. It really was such a tight race, and honestly, we wish we could crown you all, but there can only be one winner, and this year, in the year of years, as voted by our BSME members and award entrants, the winner is... Editor-in-Chief of British Vogue and European Editorial Director of Vogue, Edward Enfield. Hello, Edward, congratulations to you. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Maria. I'm so honored to accept the Editor's Editor Award. As we all know, 2020 has been a great year of change and even greater learnings. Um, our industry has faced incredible challenges and yet we're still standing. We're here in solidarity and we're here in the recognition that change needs to happen and we must continue to move forward. I want British Vogue to impact people positively and encourage inclusivity. I want to be the reason someone feels welcome, seen and supported as I was earlier in my career. I want the magazine to show young people in the diversity of beauty that exists out there by putting it in print and online. I wouldn't be here today without your support firstly, and my brilliant team at British Vogue, my mentor Jonathan Newhouse, and my partner Alec Maxwell. Thank you very much. Oh, congratulations, Edward. A very worthy winner. I'm sure you'll agree, Maria. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm still not over that September issue. It was, um, it was historic. It was breathtaking. It was awesome. Absolutely a worthy winner. Beautiful work. And now we move on to our final winner of this evening, an award for editorial excellence introduced in 1988 in memory of the incredibly talented writer, editor and cartoonist Mark Boxer. It's discussed and decided by the BSME committee to find an individual who's made an outstanding editorial contribution to magazines in this country and has become one of the most prestigious awards of the publishing industry. And here to tell us a little bit more about this year's recipient is Piers Morgan. Well, this year's winner arrived for work at the Wimbledon News at the tender age of 17 with just a smattering of exam results, plus some other experience in her local Cornish newspaper. I know because I was there and she worked as a junior reporter alongside me. And I have to say, was rather shy and prone to blushing, particularly when I would tease her. Which, when you think about what happened with her career later, is pretty ironic. Uh, but it gave her a love of journalism and the confidence to take on Fleet Street. She worked on various top flight newspapers and magazines over the next few years, including The Sun, Marie Claire, and The Times Magazine, before landing her first magazine editorship on a new magazine called B, where she introduced ideas around campaigning and hard-hitting subject matter for a young female audience. The circulation rose steadily, and her ability to make a, make a mark led to awards and the notice of bigger publishing houses. After temporarily being lured back to newspapers to launch T2 for The Times, her dream job came as the editor of Cosmopolitan. Yes, the shy, retiring star of the Wimbledon News, who used to blush all the time, became the editor of Cosmo. In those days, it was the UK's biggest selling women's magazine, and Miss job only came up once a decade. Her ability to push boundaries clinched to the role, and she took over in 2000. When cover lines like Sex in Space and How to Spot Your Ideal Love, The Clue is in Your Speedos, this was Cosmo with a sense of humour and the combination of the female empowerment message with a newfound cheekiness worked in. Circulation grew, and advertisers loved the new approach too. And after almost four years, another dream role came up, and she left Cosmo to edit rival L. And it was here that she ended up spending the longest time on any title, 10 years. 
She won numerous awards and became one of the most respected names in fashion, championing young designers and women in the industry. She was one of the first print editors to recognize and pivot to digital, creating the L Fashion Cupboard, a real life entity that played out via social and online. And the last move was as editor in chief of Sunday Time Style, one of the country's most beloved fashion publications. Again, she pushed the fusion of print and digital launching po podcasts and digital franchises out of the traditional print product. Anyone who's ever worked with this woman will know her to be a hard taskmaster, but always out of a desire to deliver the best in class and always with a wicked sense of humor. I've known her for 30 odd years and she hasn't changed a bit. Industry is littered with people who had their start under her. Her passion for magazines is unrivaled and the impact she's had on them is enormous, which is why Lorraine Candy is a thoroughly deserving winner of the Mark Boxer Award. <laughs> That was unexpected. I can't believe I've known Piers 30 years. I can't believe I've been doing this 30 years. So, gosh, thank you. Um, so, firstly, I want to say winning this is a bit of a surprise. Um, so I guess I should do what everyone does, which is just thank all the patient and supportive teams that I've worked with over the years, from my editors at the Wimbledon News, where I met Piers, um, through to everyone I work with at The Sun, The Mirror, Today, The Daily Mail, The Times, The Sunday Times and Marie Claire. And also to thank all the wonderful publishers and CEOs I worked with as Editor-in-Chief on Cosmopolitan and Elle. And of course, I've got to thank all the amazing, talented interns and assistants who were exceptionally patient and supported me in my career as well, and um, who've all gone on to do really brilliant things. And I'm so proud to see them out there. Uh, I want to thank also all the amazing friends I made among the teams that I managed. We had such a laugh. I mean, I think we had the best laugh uh, in magazines. Uh, I've had so much fun in my career, it's been really exhilarating and I'm really lucky to work with some of the industry's most inspiring people. It's just been a blast, it's been brilliant. Um, so I've been in print media now since I was 17 years old and I'm 52 and I've watched it adapt and evolve with energy and creativity again and again over the years. So I'm excited about the future of print of magazines. Um, I do sense new activism and optimism on the horizon for many magazine brands, which is really encouraging. There are some talented and much more diverse storytellers coming through, and I really can't wait to see what they do. So I want to wish everyone with new projects and new plans good luck, especially this year. And I want to thank the BSME committee for overseeing uh, handing this Mark Boxer award to me, which I'm really proud to have won. Um, I'm very grateful. And it's a shame that I can't do what I normally do at a BSME award ceremony, <laughs> which for those of you who will know me, I do kind of very enthusiastically grasp a good night out. Um, I usually get a bit tipsy. I usually dance to ABBA. Uh, somewhere along the way, I will lose my purse. Um, and I once gave myself a black eye after falling out of a taxi onto my uh, Editor of the Year award. So all those things have happened in the past. It's a shame I can't do them now. So I guess I'm just gonna have to go to the kitchen and have a baby sham, uh, it's not as much fun. I really miss all my lovely magazine friends. Um, I'm really proud to have won this and I thank everyone who put my name forward. And I hope I can see you all again soon for cocktails and the gossip. So, goodbye. And that is a wrap. We hope you have enjoyed our virtual BSME awards. A huge thanks to Jessica Morgan, Jeremy Leslie, Ellie Goldstein, Kate Garraway, Sabrina Geyer, Bryony e. Gordon, Piers Morgan, Julia Bradbury, Alan Tishmarsh, John Simpson, Charlie Borman, and Steve McCurry. Whew! What a fantastic array of guests there. And of course, a big thank you to the insanely talented Clara Antho as my co-host tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you everybody for uh, having me and long live the written word alongside beautiful photography and you know the escapism that reading magazines and reading articles gives us so thanks everyone until next year thank you also to our sponsors marks and spencers for sending all of our winners their amazing hampers which will be arriving on your doorstep over the next few days and avesio of course for hosting us on their event software this evening but most of all a huge thank you to all of you for entering this year's bsme awards and for joining us tonight what I hope you'll agree was a pertinent reminder of the brilliant work our industry has created. Please share yours and your colleagues' successes on social media, tagging, tagging in at BSME Insta, and feel free to carry on chatting via the messaging system below. 
Before I log off, I think we should all raise a glass to our judging panel, all of whom make up the wonderful BSME committee, with some additional judges joining them too, and who have all spent hours going through the entries and making extremely difficult decisions about tonight's winners. They are credit to the BSME and our incredible industry. And Hattie, I know I leave the BSME chair in good hands. Congratulations again to all of the entrants, shortlisted entries, and of course, tonight's winners. You all achieved so much in 2020 and should be immensely proud of yourselves. I know we are. Enjoy the rest of your evenings, stay safe, and we look yeah. forward to seeing you in a real life very, Congrats very again, soon. Congrats again, everybody. Bye, guys. Take care.